Hey everybody, this is Hannah Yardy, and this is my Ed Talk for the History of Education. So I decided to do my Ed Talk on the history of private schools, because even though I do think I'll be working in a public school, before public schools were really so common like they are now, private schools really played a big role in the history of education. So private schools really came before public schools. The, the first school, the first schools were all private schools. And when the United States was just coming together as a country, schooling for young people um, was mostly provided by small private schools. And the education in the colonial days was mostly divided. Boys at one school learning core subjects like reading and math, and girls in different schools, sometimes just taught in other people's homes, where they learned domestic arts. And only white children were receiving education in these private schools until slavery was abolished. And usually, way back in the day with these first private schools, all of the teacher were men, which is interesting. Now, the very first private schools were established by religious missionaries of the Roman Catholic Church in both Florida and Louisiana. But the private schools in the Northeastern colonies were much better organized than those in the Southern states. And schools such as the Boston Latin School were founded in order to teach classical languages like Latin and Greek. And a fun fact is that in 1628, the Collegiate School in Manhattan, New York was established, and this is the oldest still running private school in the United States today. So as the 18th century carried on, the English grammar schools became more popular and more necessary because as the world was changing, there was just a greater need for more educated people. So then by the 19th century, but not until the 1840s, an organized system of public education began to take shape. And leading this push for better education, mostly in the Northeastern colonies, were leaders such as Horace Mann and Henry Bernard, who were the architects of the concept of public funding for schools at the local level which is a model that's still used in the 21st century. So what kept these private schools going was parents who wanted a great education for their kids and leaders who understood the importance of education. So people wanted schools for their children and certain people understood how necessary it was. So all of these people came together creating these private school places where these students could build their education. So by the end of the 1800s is where there started to be a change in the popularity of private schools. So around 1879, the private secondary enrollment made up about 73% of all educational enrollment in the United States. However, by 1890, the number dropped down to only 30, almost 32% of all education. And then by 1900, it was only 7.6% of total school enrollment was in private schools. So there was a big change from the late, from 1879 to 1900. It was around this time that the government regulatory activity in educational affairs was increased and a lot of doubts were being cast on the ability and the desires of some of the private schools. So they're kind of, this is when there was really a turn towards public schooling in the United States. But then again, during the mid 20th century, following World War II, the numbers for private schools started increasing back up again. And today, there are just over 33,000 private schools in the United States, which are serving about 5.4 million kindergarten through 12-year-old students. 
And these private schools account for 25% of the nation's schools and enroll only about 10% of all students. The majority of these private schools, about 79%, are religiously affiliated schools. And these schools are run based on a based on the uh, tuition that students pay to attend and they are usually under the immediate control of a private corporation of some sort. So that was my Ed Talk on the history of private education. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.